Hello friends, Bear here. It's time to choose the next aircraft build from Tamiya. Which one? Okay, let's just cut straight to the chase. We're going to be doing this one, F-14A carrier launch version. They brought this one out recently. I bought this one before, F-14D. I really want to do this one, but I'm going to save it for another time. I've got other plans for that one. Phantom as well. Oh my God, she will be done in the future. But anyways, we're going to go this Launch version, as you can see, quite a battered box. Battered box saved me $40 off retail. But it means I haven't got the piece of cardboard that's actually the launch deck. So I need to think of how to solve that. But besides that, this is a excellent kit by all accounts. The Tamiya quality, the, uh, the fit, the detail is absolutely top end. Are there any negatives about this kit? Well, yeah, there is a little, there's a few, there's a few tiny ones we can talk about. We aren't going to do a full review. There's absolutely no point. There's plenty of reviews on the net. You can watch them for hours. There's no point doing that. Instead, I'll introduce you to this project on how I want to carry through this build. I'll talk a little bit about those negative points, but also we'll just introduce you to this project on how I want to do this F14A. Let's crack on. Okay, very briefly, just show you what's inside this battered box. And here's the first sort of problem. We've got a piece of cardboard that represents the launch deck. Mine's uh, just too tight and torn. Anyways, it's just a piece of cardboard. No big deal. And this is absolutely just rammed full of plastic. There's absolutely loads inside here. Tons of it. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you some macro shots of the details uh, there's nothing really to point out. What the main thing about this version is, is that the original, the F-14A that they brought out, and uh, the F-14D, they had them allowing you to swing the wings, but they didn't show the wings in a dirty configuration with the flaps dropped. So it is in the carrier launch pose. And uh, I was really happy when they brought this out. So they brought out separate parts for the wings, and also the uh, sort of th this part here, which I suppose you could call spar, that allows the wings to be posed only in that launch position with the wings extended. So that's the main part. I'm going to show you some macro of the detail of the parts. Uh, there's nothing else to speak about. The things, I'm going to mention a few negatives. The one thing is, this is a very, very expensive kit. There's no photo etch inside it. There's no extras. There's nothing um, uh, added on that uh, you would expect um, at this sort of price level. In fact, Tamiya provides them as extra parts you need to pay more money for. I think they should have been in the box, but that's just me. I think this is another thing that uh, Tamiya could have done better. You do get this, which is a mask set but they're not die cut, so you need to cut them out yourself and you need to be really accurate to do that. Why can't they provide die cut masks? I think that's uh, something that would, you should get at this price point, let's, let's put it that way. The provided box, in the box markings are really colorful. They are really nice, but just bear something in mind. This is the carrier launch set. However, the aircraft that they depict this first one is Naval Air Station Oceana. So basically on the RAG or um, not carrier based. So why have they done that? However, they have got this. This is one of the aircraft that shot down to um, Libyan aircraft, I think. So maybe it's, it is marked up as John F. Kennedy. But I'm surprised they have it as Naval Air Station Oceana. This other version is uh, on the John F. Kennedy, so makes it appropriate for carrier launch. And this other version as well, Naval Air Station Oceana, not quite sure why they do that, if this meant to be a carrier launch aircraft. And this one definitely is uh, Naval Air Facility Atsugi, I suppose that's Japan. Again, not a carrier-based aircraft, but is marked up as Kitty Hawk. Maybe small little quibbles, but I thought they would have got the markings right to match a carrier launch aircraft. One of the big pluses about this particular kit is that there's a lot of options for the cockpit, panelling, etc. 
On my build, I'm not gonna be using any aftermarket cockpit. I'm gonna use what's supplied in the box because it's perfectly fine, looks really good. But you have got an option between later model uh, consoles for the Rio, for the Pilot, glass screen version or the earlier analog version. So you have got that option. And also this is really, really handy. And another plus point as well, you get three supplied gun vent options for the M61 Gatling. Uh, this allows you more choice in the aircraft that you're going to depict because there's so many different options for these aircraft. One of the marking options that is included is a bomb cap, basically air to ground munitions. However, including precision guided, but from my understanding, the F-14s that were upgraded to uh, allow for air-to-ground attacks had to have a GPS system affixed onto the rear uh, Rio station on top of the cowling, but that part is not included within this kit. This is a really strange, uh, it's an anomaly. We have got a TARPS aircraft and actually the cockpit allows you to have the Rio with the TARPS controller on the left console and on the mounting point it shows you the tarps being fitted and two side winders and there's the construction of the tarps there however there is something missing this is the anomaly this is the sprue with the tarps itself excellent detail etc have a look at this part here this is a jammer pod i can't remember the exact uh, uh, designation however when from my understanding, when the tops were carried, they also carried this jammer pod. So they provide it as parts. However, it's not called out for in the instructions, which seems very strange to me. So note that point as well. And um, this is my like number one critique of the Tamiya kit. On one side, a plus, honestly, if you are a, let's say, beginning immediate model and you're having trouble with decals, or decals or water transfer transfers, um, the ones that supply, they're quite thick. So they're not as delicate as many other manufacturers provide. However, it does create a big disadvantage in that the thickness is something that you have to overcome. You can actually feel the thickness of the decals. The print, the colors are absolutely fantastic, but the thickness is a negative. Um, however, on Smaller decals, it doesn't really matter. You can get away with, with using them. But the fact that you've got these big, thick decals is a massive negative for me. And I always go for aftermarket decals when I do my Tamiya projects. Another slight negative for me is um, the lack of the air-to-air -air refueling probe. All that you're provided with is part B20, which is a blanking plate. Um, for the air, air refueling probe. Usually not an issue unless you want to pose an air, air refueling probe, or as I'm gonna explain later on, it affects the build that I will be doing. And therefore my build won't be as accurate as it could have been uh, due to that. Okay, like I said, I'm just gonna show you in macro just how stunningly fine and crisp the detail is on these Tamiya kits really really will be a pleasure to build this i think another massive plus as well with this kit is the amount of ordnance that's supplied within the box but that just gives you a small appreciation for the detail that's um, provided by tamia uh, let's go and talk quickly about the project now. Okay, refreshingly, for me, I'm going to be basically building the model out of the box. There's going to be very few aftermarkets going to go on. I've got a uh, metal detail um, alpha probe and pitot tube that I can add in. You can get this in the Tamiya detail set as well. I think it should have been included within the box. Nevertheless, I've got this from Master Models. And it is, uh, I think it's cheaper than the... Um, supply the uh, aftermarket from Tamiya. My main addition is going to be these uh, crew figures, the F-14A pilot and Rio in 148 scale from Aerobonus.
cast in resin, cast on the seats. There is one rather big drawback about this set. I'm just going to tell you about that now. As you can see, the, uh, the casting is beautiful. And I've got these to practice my painting skills in 148. I think they will look absolutely great in the cockpit if I paint them up okay. And that's the main reason I've, I've got these. Now, can you spot the problem? It's this. The mask is not attached. It allows you to paint the face. The face will look good. However, if you're launching uh, off the deck, uh, you would be, you know, you'd have your mask on, possibly visor down as well. And these figures are not provided that way. Now, I could substitute the heads with the supplied plastic figures, but I'm just actually going to go with this and um, just leave it as one of those things. Yeah, people can point out in the comments that it's inaccurate. It will be inaccurate. I'm going to have it launching and the pilot and Rio are not going to be masked up. But besides that, this should be really fun to paint these. The main consideration, of course, is getting these to fit in properly, um, make sure that they fit inside the cockpit properly. And the big one is that the canopy does not infringe on the top of the ejection seat. So we'll bear that in mind. Beside that, really excellent figures. Just as a point as well, they are two slightly different figures, as you can see, in terms of the hands, I think mainly. Heads are quite similar. I've got a mask set from Edouard, just the very basic one. It just makes it easier. I don't want to deal with cutting out those masks that are supplied within the kit. I want to use masks that are really easy to apply. So I've got these. Okay, I had a little moan about the Tamiya decals. So I've gone for aftermarket. I've got Furball Aero Design, US Navy Fighter Squadron 114 the aardvarks and um, I'll be choosing one of these. I'll be choosing a gray jet and uh, the one that I'm sort of going for is not these earlier versions. So I'm going to choose a gray jet basically at the cessation of hostilities of the first Gulf War, Desert Storm. Um, VF-114 deployed from the USS Lincoln and flew combat air patrols over Kuwait. Um, lots of pictures. I'm going to show you some pictures now of these jets flying over the burning oil wells of Kuwait. Really quite like that idea. I have to research the armament, but it appears that they only flew combat air patrols during that, um, that phase. So they actually wanted to deny... deny airspace to anything Iraqi, even though the conflict was basically over. They flew protection over Kuwait, um, and I've been researching that. Really quite like that theme, and um, it will fit in well, of course, that they were carrier launched as well off of the USS Lincoln doing that combat air patrol. They didn't come ashore. They weren't launched from shore-based uh, facilities, and that is my plan. That's my project. I'm really looking forward to cracking on. I think the videos are going to be basically just music videos. But um, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to hear me talking about it? I don't think there's any need. This Tamiya kit is legendary. Uh, it's meant to go together really well. Uh, I can't foresee any problems. And also, I want to build it relatively quickly. So uh, we'll be cracking on with this. Don't know how many parts it's going to be. I'm going to try and show you the whole process of painting those figures I think that could be interesting and of course the weathering is going to be a key point in this build so this is the bet and see you soon and thanks a lot for all the support